is do or die in the sense that it's my one big chance with this product because it is so unique, there's nothing like it out there. Centre stage on this bad boy. Oh, you'll smash it. Peter's sort of the golden boy and most people want, like your Simon Cowell of Dragon's Den. But I'm going to try and ignore that and go with whoever gives me the best deal. Hello Dragons, I'm Matthew. I'm the inventor of the Umph. The Umph is currently the fastest in-cup coffee brewer in the world. It produces a coffee in between one to two minutes, and that's three times faster than a standard cafetiere. Not only is the Umph fast, but it also produces a better cup of coffee. It brews under pressure, similar to an expensive coffee machine where you'd get a coffee when you're out and about. The Umph, once it's made, you can drink from it, take it with you and use it as you would do a travel mug, or you can just pour from it into a cup and enjoy it at home. The Umph launched on Kickstarter last year. It achieved, uh, against a target of 24,000, it achieved 61,000, making it officially the most successful crowdfunded coffee gadget from the UK. We're looking for an investment of 40,000 pound in exchange for a 5% stake in the business. We envisage that that will be worth double that investment in year one and four times that investment in year two. Now, if I haven't said this any faster than the other 100 times I've said it in the mirror, then your coffee should be ready to try. And I'd be happy to take any questions you may have on the oomph or the business itself. Thanks for listening. A smooth pitch from Matthew Deasy, who wants £40,000 for 5% of his portable coffee maker company. First to question the entrepreneur is fellow coffee connoisseur Tej Lalvani, who thinks Matthew may have missed a trick in his demo. Right, well, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a coffee lover. In fact, we've got coffee plantations in India. We make our own, grow our own coffee out there. So uh, it's an interesting product. But what you should have done, really, coming in here, is got us a sample from a standard cafetiere and shown your product compared to that so we can see really the difference in the high pressure, what it causes. I mean, so, I've, got, I've got reviews from like World Barista Championship judges and things like that that will Yeah, but I mean, but this is, this is our opinion. Can you tell me, um, your main USP, you said that it does the pressurization better than other products and it is portable and you can take it with you, is that? Yeah. It's the only one that you can rebrew. So you can rebrew and put it into a cup. Yeah. So there's no other product that can rebrew at the moment. No, nothing. There's nothing that does that. Tell me what your forecast is. You one numbers because you very boldly said that you would double that investment. Okay. Within year one. So this year we're looking at getting uh, to 1.1 million in terms of sales. So uh, units. No, for pounds. 1.1 million. Yeah. So how many units? Um. I haven't done the actual figures on the actual units. That I would, because it's a mix, it's a blend. Oh. So, so if I explain this month, so far this month we've done twenty thousand pounds at eleven thousand pound GP. But you still know how many units you've sold. You still, you still know how many physically of these have gone out. Physically of those, I know total. Yeah, the four thousand four thousand four hundred units have gone out in total to date. Yeah, sorry, let me just take you back, because I was trying to get to year one numbers, and, and then you tried to explain that so by year, year last, one last month. month. You did £20,000 worth of sales last month. Yeah. So how many units was that? 20, this month, this month current now. So, of course, half of the way through the month, that's, that's what we're up to. Um, so units-wise, that's a mixture between distributors yeah. and selling direct online. So well, I know it's a mixture as to where they've all gone, but it's still a certain number of units, isn't it? Yeah. It doesn't matter where they've landed. I know the splits financially, but I don't know the splits in terms of units. Matthew, that's frustrating. So if you say, is it 80% distribution? I can, if you, can, I, can I break it down? Well, so how much? I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm, I'm a mathematical modeling. I've done 1,500. I've done it on what I I've, I've run the business. I've drilled it down in terms of an Excel spreadsheet and I've put in Matthew, terms of. Matthew, answer the question, please. What, sorry, what's is it? Is it 80% of your business distribution in your model? No, I would say it's 
less than that. I would say it's around 60%, 60 to 70%, I would say. Matthew, I have to say, this, is, this just isn't good enough, actually. Which bit? All of it. You say it's the best coffee, right? Yeah. It is terrible. Look at it. Taste it. You tell me if that's good coffee. It's under-extracted. It's not a fair test, really. The water isn't at the right temperature on here, so you're not going to get the same brewing as if I'd done it directly from a kettle. That might be why it tastes under-extracted. Whatever it is, you're coming on the den, your numbers don't add up. Let me tell you why. So in the last 12 months, no, what have no, you turned over? I've not had a product until the end of January. The product didn't come into the okay, country until from January. from January to June, six months, what will your turnover be? January to June. Yeah. This, well, what do I've you only started selling to distributors this month. I've done £20,000 in total, all channels, this month's sales. Of that, I've got £11,000 profit, GP, and the net profit currently this month, taking into consideration all of my costs for this month, is four and a half thousand. Okay, twenty thousand pounds this month. If you add it all up, it'll come to two hundred and forty thousand pounds for the year. So how do you get a million one? Well, I've been, we're only halfway through the month, so I've allowed forty thousand pound in my second year. But no, but you're saying this first year you'll do one point so, one. Sorry, not my second year. Sorry, sorry, to get sorry, I'm confusing. Can I ask right now where do most people buy? to go coffee cups i would guess that e-tail is the biggest in terms of selling the products so people buying that product you would be mainly sort of amazons of this world okay at the moment you could you couldn't tell me how many are sold or what the main routes to market are on the to go coffee cups it's a good question. The only thing is, I would say that there's a, a real split in terms of people are using it at home a lot. They're not just taking it out coffee to go. So you don't, you don't have any idea how many, the size of the market, and much more important, the route to market. I don't. I, you really should know your market. And I wholeheartedly agree with Deborah. You really need to know everything. You need to understand your numbers, and you need to come in and deliver it. And the next thing is, I don't think it's very well made. OK, why, why would you well, say that? Well, this doesn't even hold down. It, it does, doesn't it? It does not. No, that one doesn't. So isn't it supposed to hold down shut as well? It yes. should do, yeah. Well, it does, mine doesn't. You, it, no, this one is... Uh, you're, you're, you know, if Deborah's doesn't either close, this is really shoddy. When you came in and your pitch, it looks, wow, this could be unique. This is really good, I really think. You could have something, and then... Then the lid, yeah. I think what I would say in response to that is that I can obviously return the lids. We have checked them. We are, remember, it's only the... Fir you fir can't have checked this one, and you can't have checked Deborah's. I checked every facet apart from opening the lid, yeah. You're right, OK. You need to bring in a product that you've at least checked, because 40% of the product doesn't work. Your problem with this is, for me, and this is the most disappointing thing, the only reason I could see why that will ever survive in the marketplace is that the taste is better. And without an absolute champion can I that just, says, wow... Can I put one point forward? OK. The one feedback that we've had is that it makes a good cup of coffee. It does have something to do with extraction. If, you cut, if your hot water's not hot enough, it doesn't extract the coffee enough, and then, because the ump stops the brewing process, that's it then. It's not going to get any better. If I could make you another coffee, it would taste mm. knockout. I'm sorry, it's just that when you put your heart and soul into eight years, you don't want to let go. What is your background? What have you done before this? I've got a... Um, set a business up before. Yeah, I set up, set up my a coffee machine business that sells directly to uh, restaurants, cafes, um, bars, offices. My wife has ran that for the last year to allow me to, to that, take to the... So you've got another business? I have, yeah. Wow. <laughs> what does that turn over? 1.5 million. You've got another business that turns out 1.5 million? Yeah. I'm shocked. Right, yeah. And how long has that been going? 11 years. And how much profit did you make last year? 20,000, and we bought our premises as well. <laughs> well, I'm going to say, Matthew, that is amazing. Congratulations. 
it's clearly the pressure of this environment that's doing you an injustice. Because I would have definitely said that you're completely naive in terms of business. I understand and that. And you're clearly not. That yeah. might have just saved me from going out, actually. Thank heavens for that. <laughs> Matthew, you have done the most uninvestable pitch today in a potentially investable product and probably an investable entrepreneur. However, <laughs> despite the fact that the product broke and your presentation of numbers was abysmal, I still think there is something there. And I say that because you must be doing something right and you must know the coffee industry. I think you probably are worth, and I'll call it a punt at this stage, only because of what I, I'm not trying to, I'm not offending you, I hope. No, it's our But it's because today. of what I see at I this moment that. in time. I yeah. That, yeah. So I am going to make you an offer. But I'll warn you now, we're going to stress test the products. We're going, you're going to make me the best coffee I've ever tasted. It'll improve it. Yeah. I'm going to offer you all of the money, but I'd want 15% of the business. 15%. A lifeline, as Jenny Campbell spots potential in Matthew and his coffee maker. But the offer of £40,000 is for three times the equity he wanted to give away. Can he now extract a rival bid from his old adversary, Peter Jones? Matthew, I think that you've learnt probably a lot by coming in today. Um, I've spent most of my life selling. It's quite annoying when you fail on a demonstration. Look, you've just got the most amazing offer. Um, um, and I think that this is a long way away from being a product that people will buy. And there'll be a lot of work needed to, to bring this to market. And that's the reason why I'm not going to invest today and say that I'm out. OK. Peter Jones's exit leaves Jenny Campbell as the only dragon with an offer on the table. Would you give me one minute just to have a thing? I'll give you one okay? minute. Thank you. But as she wants 15% of his company, the entrepreneur has a tricky decision to make. I'd be uh, very happy to accept your offer, Jenny. Right. <laughs> Let's fix this product. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. OK. In a remarkable den turnaround, Matthew manages to strike a deal and take away a wealthy investor who's ready to join him in his coffee homebrew revolution. It's a lot harder than it looks, I think, is the best way of summing it up. I just literally couldn't think. The cogs just wouldn't turn. Considering the way the coffee didn't brew and everything else, I, I was happy when she came in at the end. Right, let's go and have a coffee. <laughs> Definitely.